Good evening. Wow, I started this off <laughs> fucking wow. brilliantly already. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to SDGC episode number 169. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Uh, how is everybody doing tonight? Uh, it is a uh, it is a busy day today, um, hot on the heels of XO19, which we'll be talking about momentarily. Um, tonight we are joined, I've got... My fellow podcast buddies, Zach, Justin, and Jeff. How you guys doing? So good. Hello. And friend of the show and frequent guest, Sam Talbert. What's going on, man? Uh, I'm doing really well. Thanks for inviting me on. It was kind of spur of the moment, but I appreciate that. It's been way too long. Yeah, it's, you know been, it's been too long. And also with XO19 having been today, like we, we had to have you on. Like it's just too too perfect, you know? Um, and, and it's nice to be able to have Absolutely. friends on spur of the moment when we've got, you know, when we've got the open space for it. Um, so yeah, uh, it's been, it's been a day, uh, it's been a week. What, Zach, what have you been playing, bud? Uh, I actually, like 30 minutes before the end of this, uh, before the, before the start of the show, I finished Death Stranding finally, uh, 33 hours, which is me mainlining it. I did zero extra work, no side quests. I hauled ass through it because I, I was like, I need, I want some time with Nor Norman, but I don't want to live with him. <laughs> Sorry, I just, I just got to say, this reminds me of the time I posted my playtime for Breath of the Wild and it was like 60 hours. And I said it in like, like I said, it wasn't amazing. And everyone's like, why did you rush through the game? <laughs> yeah. 60 yeah, hours. No. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 30, 33 hours was enough. Um, Have you reconnected away. America yet, do you think? Uh, listen, no spoilies. No spoilies. <laughs> How would you rank it in terms of the Strand games you've played? I would say, so here's the thing. Um, the Duality of Man, it is the best and worst Strand game I've ever played. <laughs> so a lot, a lot to think about there. Uh, but besides me, uh, has, has uh, I guess, uh, Justin... Justin. Yes. Justin. Have yes, you Zach. also been have you also been stranding death? I, I have been. I I think I've put in the same exact number of hours of you, but I am not done with the game. Uh <laughs> uh yeah, I there's a lot to criticize about it. A lot to criticize about it, but like the stuff that's good is real, real good. Like I it's kind of made me want to revisit a few other games um, because I've never really enjoyed this style of game before. Um, one where it's just more about like plotting routes and you have a lot of just general open options. Usually that stuff turns me off to a game immediately. Uh, like stamina meters, <laughs> like survival elements, all that stuff. And for some reason, it all really works for me here because you have a lot, like you have a lot more direct input as a player instead of, "Hey, this bar ran out. Time to fuck you." <laughs> like, um, right, right. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, there's a lot of really, okay. The, the ride of Norman Reedus stuff is. I at one point laughed so hard I scared my cat because <laughs> I um I found for, like there is like a communal co-op kind of thing where you can build structures and they'll appear in other people's games. I encountered somebody that uh, had built a trike that had a ride with Norman Reedus skin on it, and so I got on the bike and then Sam. The char main character in game, played by Norman Reedus, says, "This thing should be on a ride with Norman Reedus." Fuck yeah! Man. Yeah, yeah man. This, <laughs> this game is just a fucking ad. It really. Is. <laughs> we listen. We th there's a ton to say about fucking Death Stranding, and I think I think SC I think it's safe to say at this point, SCGC will have some sort of full <laughs> episode all about it, like in the coming weeks, as more of us get a chance to play it. I mean, it, there's just a lot to say. I'm sorry, it's, Derek is being very distracting right now. <laughs> you know it's what? Fine. Straight up a game that it's straight up a game that like I don't think anybody could be confident in giving like a set score, <laughs> um, kind of thing. Like it's kind of all over the place, but overall, I'm really enjoying it. Um, sure. And Derek, what kind of popcorn do you have over? There? Rum, pumpkin spice, caramel popcorn. 
Nice. There's a lot going on in that bowl. There's a lot going yeah. on. I, I had a whim. And none of it is a dessert. I, it's, <laughs> it's look, sweet. It's whoa, rum, whoa. pumpkin it's spice, it's caramel popcorn. <laughs> My kitchen smells like dessert, okay? I had to bake this fucker for an hour. It's dessert at this point. Yeah, no, it's so popcorn is a dessert. You heard it here on SCGC. Enough talking about popcorn, of course. We already know it's a dessert. Sam, our guest, our boy, you're very, very busy these days, but tell us what have you been playing, man? Uh, yeah, so I've been playing a few hours of The Outer Worlds. I've really enjoyed that. I haven't put half as much time into it as I would like because work has just been really, really busy and a bunch of games are all dropping at the same time, but I like it. I think everyone has heard about that enough at this point, but it's a good RPG. Yeah. I've also put like 18, 19 hours into Death Stranding. I'm still stranded in Chapter 3. I really don't know what I think of it at this point. I'm, I don't think I'll know what I think even after I finish it at this point. There is a lot of stuff I like about it, like the social communal elements of seeing a bridge build up over time. Like That's really cool. I like that yeah. kind of thing. And then there's just some of the most whack nonsense I've ever seen in my entire life at the same time. And the story, I actually think the story is interesting, but it doesn't do enough with its material. And that's yeah. all I'll say. Uh, well, listen, words. But you're further than I am, obviously. You finished it, so I don't listen, know how that's going to go. Wait, wait till you hit New Game Plus and they add the chafing meter. And, <laughs> and that will really elevate your gaming experience. Excuse yeah, me? Okay. The, you know, the, ch the chafe meter. That's definitely a thing, and not something I'm. And, and you, you have to fight it by uh, pouring monster energy into. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you don't, to lubricate if you don't... the the underpants, clearly. Right, okay. like if you if if you exhaust your chafe meter, uh, Norman walks like a cowboy, and you are, are very slow. It's unfortunate, but I can't. I actually can't tell if you're serious. <laughs> well, okay, the funny <laughs> part. The funny <laughs> part <laughs> is the funny part is the chafe meter isn't a thing. But you can make Norman Reedus walk really slow like a cowboy when you load him up with stuff on his legs. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, hey, new game plus. You don't know this. And you, don't, you haven't seen that I've true. seen. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Jeff, what have you been playing? Uh, I have been playing um, cowboy game. Red Dead Redemption 2, a year late. Oh, you've been playing Gun? Uh <laughs> I, I have not thought about that game once until just now. <laughs> it did, I could see it took you a minute to recognize, like, yeah. Yeah, so that was a video game. Yeah, I do. I just recall the cover. Um, no, I've been playing Red Dead 2. Uh, I feel weird talking about it because I've had it muted for a year, and I just feel like there's probably been so much discourse. So yeah. I'm, I'm sure everyone's sick of it. I'm just very self-conscious about, uh, I don't know. I, I don't like, what could I possibly say that hasn't been said? Um, it's gorgeous. No, I, I'm curious, though. Like, have you avoided all spoilers about, like, gameplay and narrative? Uh, so I watched the initial teaser trailer, which, like, I don't even know if it had any characters or story elements. And I have <laughs> not... I did not even see a screenshot of the game until I started it last week. Um, I don't know. Walk. Like, even when I've been on, like, my darkest blackouts, like, I haven't been able to... It, I got lucky, admittedly, um, but yeah, like everyone, all you guys were good. Everyone was good in DMs and like my social circles and my mute filters just worked really well. So like, you know, I did not see or hear a thing about the game. The only thing that snuck through was a couple of you guys complaining about the controls. That's the only, I don't even know if people like the game. I don't know how they feel about the story. I don't know how it whole stacks up to the first game. So I'm about, uh, I don't know, the game, Rockstar Social Club says I'm 10 hours in, but Epic says I'm 20 hours. I think I'm closer to 20 hours in the game. Well, the good um, news is that it's been a really smooth launch on PC. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to get to that. Uh, but yeah, um, I bought about 20 hours. I think I'm on like almost 40 missions out of 100 or something like that. Uh, so a decent way in. And uh, I, I just, I love the game. I love it so much. It's the first uh, Red Dead Redemption is probably, it's in my top five. I think it's number five of my, my games all time. Um, this one... It's so petty, but uh, atmosphere and like setting is such a big part of games. And just the one thing I have to say is I really love the desert in the first game. That was such a big part. I would just sit in the middle of the desert and watch tumbleweeds roll by and stuff like that. And like you know, I don't know what other locations are to come in this game. Obviously, it's set further east. Um, so that's like I miss a little bit of that stuff from the first game, like the ghost towns and uh, just some of the scenery and stuff like that. It's just a little bit different uh, atmosphere in this one. But the writing uh, is. <laughs> 
I love Grand Theft Auto V, but I fucking hate the writing in those games. Um, the the writing in this is excellent. Arthur is such a good character. It's so hard to balance. Like, uh, he's like a bad. Like one minute I'm like, oh, he's a bad guy, and the next minute I'm like, ah, oh, I kind of like him though. Like he's a good guy. Like I don't know. It it's a really nuanced character, um, and it's really tough to do that in a way that's satisfying. And they give you so many different choices to like kind of be a little bit good, be a little bit bad, and it all feels really organic. It doesn't feel like the infamous good bad where it's like you know power bomb your grandma and blow her up type thing um <laughs> but the, the pc version has had some problems uh so on day one through four i couldn't even launch the game uh and actually a significant number of people could not launch the game and to this day a significant number of people can't launch the game if you just go on reddit or twitter you'll find tons of people that still can't even start the game up over a week later which is just inexcusable yeah. Um, basically, it's just the, the launcher that they're using has some crashing issues. The game itself, they just released a patch last night. It literally has like 100 fixes. There's fixes for 20 different types of crashes. Like, you should not be launching a game with 20 different types of crashing problems. And, that are that widespread. and from what I understand, it still didn't fix all of them? No, there's still uh, all sorts of problems. There's a weird, I have a weird mouse cursor problem. I think it's to do with the Epic Game Store. So if you're playing with a controller, when you play in the game, there's just a big old mouse cursor sitting in the middle of the screen. <laughs> and it makes no sense. The fix, is, the fix is to go into Windows, go into mouse settings, turn on pointer trails, and set long pointer trails. And then your cursor is not in the game. I don't that's, know. That's some. That's some like Windows ninety five bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't so, make even the slightest um, bit of sense. <laughs> yeah, and on top of all that, it's the random crashes. I've had to play missions. I've had to play probably six different missions twice because it crashed right at the end of every single mission. And because of Rockstar's mission design, like if it crashes at the end of the mission, you have it. You can't. You can't save unless you're outside of a mission. You boot the game back up. You have to go all the way back to the person who started the mission, talk to them, initiate the mission, do it all over again. So they did release a patch last night. Fingers crossed. I played a bit this morning and a bit this evening, and I have not had another one since. But uh, just one look at the Reddit. People are still having issues. They're stuttering problems. The game's pretty borked on i5s there's all sorts of weird cpu overhead problems um freezing stuttering yeah, and i'm very patient with online service games multiplayer games it's hard to do to gauge player numbers and network traffic but this is a single player game on a super basic launcher from a company that's not an indie studio they sold 100 million copies of Grand Theft Auto 5 they have billions of dollars they have all the resources in the world there's no reason that this game should have launched in this state a year later uh, on this platform, it's it's inexcusable. It, it's a mess, Jeff. And you know, if everybody just stuck to Steam, this wouldn't <laughs> be a problem. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I the, am. I am. The funny I, thing I guess... is, the funny thing is, probably sorry. Uh, probably once it actually launches on Steam, it'll be patched up, and people say that <laughs> we'll the Steam release yeah. fixed it. But it's yeah. the yeah. other updates. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I do hope we can keep hearing from you on, on your kind of progress with it. And I'm interested to see how the game ends up finally, like, at, at the end of it, how it lands for you. Um, it's kind of, kind of, it's a divisive game. And, like, I'll leave it at that. There's a lot of, there's mm -hmm. a lot of good and there's a lot of, you know, mm -hmm. that's good. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I hope they get it patched. I hope this, this recent patch fixes it for you. I guess we should go into, like, the, the big news topic for the week, which actually just happened, like, what, six hours ago now? which is uh, Xbox held XO19. It is their now annual fan event that they do each year. Uh, this year it was held in London, uh, and it was kind of the biggest thing they've done outside of E3 in a long time, that right? Was huge. Yeah, did, did all of us get a chance to watch it? I have, uh, I've yeah, seen I a summation of all the announcements. I haven't watched everything from it, but okay. I know it was there. <laughs> I mean, Sam. Sam, where should we start? I mean, you're kind of our, you're as our guest, but also as our, as our, as our friend of the show, Xbox boy. We need to know where to start here. Uh, so it depends. I guess I would start unpacking it with uh, the game announcements because those are there's less of those, but they're still pretty meaningful. So I would start with those. They actually kicked the show off with a new IP from Rare called yeah. Everwild. And uh, we didn't get to see much of it. It looks like it's sort of nature, fantasy, kind of similar art style to Sea of Thieves, but not exactly the same thing. Definitely a lot more like foliage and whatnot going on. Uh, they didn't say what kind of game it is. They didn't even announce platform. So you can pretty much bet it's like a 2021 next-gen next gen. game. Yeah, it's next-gen uh, for sure. But hey, that's cool. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, I suspect that it's like a third person cameo esque type thing, which that's cool by my by my standards. I like that kind of thing. Where just did a really successful service game with Sea of Thieves, which is still getting updates, campaigns, new stuff like that. Makes sense to go back and do something, you know, single player to kick off next gen. So, right. but, so that's a big deal. That's a big deal. That uh, game, that game looked uh, kind of, kind of vague. But I mean, it's just a trailer to kind of sa- sell you the idea of it. But it kind of reminded me a Sea of Thieves meets Ashen for people who played that game that came out last year. Ashen, like, just like it, it, it's mostly just like the vague nature meets civilization, like that kind of that kind of vibe. But yeah, I mean, it's cool to see. And, and like the big, the big thing for me that I think a uh, 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 friend friend of the show and also and also mod rar rare rar. 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 Wow. <laughs> That's a tough uh, word to say. I've never tried to say it out loud. Uh, like, yeah. I, is, that, is that Rare explicitly was like, hey, this is going to keep going into next gen, but we're also going to keep working on Sea of Thieves, which is showing just that, like, Microsoft is, is cool with letting their big studios uh, kind of keep making separate projects. Um, and then from there, Sam, it went over to Obsidian's next game. Did you all see this game? This, this Honey, I Shrunk the Kids fucking thing? I'm kind of into it, man. It's grounded, I mean, right? Yeah, it is. So it's called Grounded, and the plot is like it's a survival game, smaller in scale. It's gonna launch in early access, which is like, um, uh, it's that's not a first for Obsidian, is it? Does anyone know? I think it. I, th- I would say it probably is. Might be. Oh, yeah, like, that's just not the type of like. It's just I think the type of games that Obsidian usually releases yeah. don't lend themselves well to early access. Oh, I think I'm thinking of uh, Divinity Original Sin 2, which I think did launch in early access. I knew that, like, I've seen yeah. the pillars. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but so so basically, it's a survival game with a little bit of the Obsidian flair in it. Uh, but basically, you're you're playing, like, tiny little, little you know, Honey, I Shrunk the kid size people, and you're, like, in a backyard, and you're trying to survive is kind of, like, the whole bit. It, it looks like it's a smaller, it's going to be a smaller game, uh, they said, and it's launching early access, day and date, obviously, on Game Pass, like, early next year. Which is weird that we're seeing Obsidian already turn something around. Like I guess they, they launched Outer Worlds earlier this month, so it's it's kind of wild to see it coming around so quick. I think yeah, and I think it's um you know I I would suspect this is like a smaller team that worked on this, so like uh, I wouldn't freak out too much if it's like not someone's cup of tea. I, I don't think this is like setting back their next project three years or anything like that. But um, the game looks cute. I do think yeah. Uh, you know, my, maybe my disappointment or some people's disappointment is just like when you think about everyone knows Microsoft has Obsidian now and we know what Obsidian is known for and the type of the games they're known for. And then I just like, I think this particular game coming from that studio maybe just deflated yeah. people a, a little bit. Well, like, yeah, I, kind of... I understand. No, go ahead, Zach. It's all right. No, no, no. You go ahead, Sam. Well, I was just going to say, I understand that, Jeb, I, I really do, but the thing is, I think the timing just worked out that way, and you're right about a small team. This is literally just 13 people. Yeah. Like, it is a very, very small team. Obsidian has over 200 developers, so big RPGs are going to keep on coming. Like, The Outer Worlds, as we saw in MPD just now, is a huge success. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Justin, what did you have, buddy? Yeah, just kind of, you know, piggybacking off of that, I think it's like a very similar situation as, like, Ninja Theory and Bleeding Edge where it was something they, you know, had been working on and the timing worked out for it to, you know, be like their debut game under Microsoft, even though both games ended up not exactly being what people were hoping for from the studios. But like those those types of games will be coming. I can't imagine like, um, you know, I was guilty of this myself before, like with Bleeding Edge before, you know, I kind of heard that, hey, this is a project they had been kicking around for a while. Um, it wasn't like Microsoft's like, okay, yeah, make some service game immediately after buying them. It was just something they were had in the world. Um, and I think launching an early access game on Game Pass is kind of neat. Um, cause uh, like, I mean, aside from, you know, the whole, um, you know, I mean, everything that Microsoft makes now <laughs> releases day and date on on game pass but i think that's kind of a cool way for people to have like a low barrier of entry into trying out an early access game because i know i'm very reticent to put money down on an early access title um yeah. because well, like, so many of them like don't get finished or don't ever end up good <laughs> or um anything so like i i think that's kind of a neat um neat thing that they're doing for sure. Well, and I feel like that's like one of the biggest pieces of feedback I often see when I look at games that are in early access. 
theme is like people are saying like too many bugs not worth the price right now right which is like okay but if you're already if you're already subbing to game pass for x y and z reasons the barrier to entry to try this game for one weekend and then not touch it for a couple months and then come back is like super super low um it yeah it's it's weird to see that like these smaller projects from these teams that are made by smaller little sections um I don't know, at least, like, sometimes a game like this that's, like, a weird idea that's not traditionally done at Obsidian, like, would, would be in testing, and then when they go to make an next game, they'd be like, alright, no, this isn't really the Obsidian thing, and they would just kill it. So, like, it's interesting to see these smaller titles kind of kind of move forward. And I do think this was a way better reveal than Bleeding Edge. This, this game looks... Yeah, ble- yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. it also didn't get leaked, so there was that. Too. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, a leak does kind of kind of take the, the, the wind out of the sails a little bit. Uh, I mean, I guess is is the next thing that we should talk about Game Pass. Is that the big thing? Or, or no, no, X- there is one other big game that was revealed from Xbox Game Studios. Actually, uh, sorry, uh, Sam. In, in between these, can I just point out one thing quickly? Um, go ahead. Uh, just on topic of Obsidian and Game Pass, I'm just looking at the MPD. Did you, did you guys see where Outer Wilds placed? Outer uh, Worlds. Outer Worlds, yeah. It was, I think, number two for October, which is, like, yeah, pretty which, good. Which shocked me. Like, that was a game... Right behind I, Call of Duty. Like, I didn't even That's know impressive. that game was releasing this year until, like, September. I yeah. And, like, that was a game that I thought was going to really get lost in the holiday shuffle. And I'm very glad to be wrong. Um, by all accounts, it sounds really good. I haven't been able to play it myself yet. Um, I'm looking forward to eventually playing it, but yeah, it was really cool to see that doing so well. It's also it's also one of those weird things, and I, and it's something that we should probably reach out to our to, to front of the show uh, Matt from NPD to like figure out like you know one of the things we talked about early on with Game Pass was that it was actually increasing the dollar sales that we were seeing from these games, and so it's interesting to see. I, I'm interested in the platform split, but also now that Game Pass is on PC and Xbox. It's pretty wild to see the dollar sales be this high for uh, Obsidian's game. I mean, maybe it just slammed up. Especially because, like, this game didn't launch on Steam. That's where a lot of your traditional Fallout, traditional old-school RPG audiences, and Steam wasn't there. So either way more people bought it on the Epic Game Store than I thought, or maybe they chose the lesser of two evils in their mind or whatever and went to the Microsoft store. I don't know, but I am thrilled to see it as a big success for that. Yeah, I'm just looking thrilled. at the the console um, rankings, it was number two on PS4 for the month of October. And even on Xbox, it was number four, uh, right behind Madden and above NBA, which, like, you know, that's just super impressive. So anyways, on the topic of Game Pass, I just thought that was relevant. No, it definitely is. It definitely is. Now, Sam, I believe my guess, my gut tells me you're going to talk about Don't Nod. That is correct. Yes, I was going to bring up Don't Nod. Uh, did any of you get to read up on this game or see the trailer I, for I it did. beforehand? Or Okay, all right. Yeah, so this is a big deal because, and this was kind of unclear when they actually did the reveal. So to be clear, this is an Xbox game. Like Xbox Game Studios is publishing it. The team worked with them, yada, 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 all that jazz. That's really cool. It's but, not an acquisition, right? It's just no, a, no, it's not an acquisition, but it's like right? a Sobo doing the grunt work on uh, Flight Simulator. They're the ones making the game. Xbox. Got it, got it. Yeah, That's so it, it, it's pu- it's a publishing deal. Exactly. They're a publishing, exactly. developing deal, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but it's called... Uh, hold on, I had the article. Tell me why. Up. Tell me why, yes. And this is a really cool thing. It's three episodes, all coming summer 2020, and they said that we know that the whole episodic thing has turned people off because they wait for months in between episodes. They're all going to release summer. So back to back to back, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And according to the press release, this is the first game. There's two main characters. Uh, this is the first game to star a main transgender hero or main character in a big publisher game, which is kind of a big deal. Yeah. And the press release that we received also noted that they were explicitly working with GLAD, uh, the organization, and they were getting their feedback and getting their input in the characters and the writing to say, hey, like, we're doing this very carefully. We're doing this the right way. We're not rushing it. We're not going to subject ourselves to usual tropes or anything like that. I was actually blown away by the way they presented it. Yeah. Well, and, like, that's one of the things that I've really liked about, about Don't Nod. Like, I, I haven't played all of Life is Strange 2, uh, and I, I haven't finished Vampire, but, like, I always like to see these these kind of double-A studios swing really big, and Don't Nod has been doing that in recent years. And, like... I, between Microsoft and and Don't Nod doing their due diligence to make sure they represent uh, 
the characters well. Like, it, it seems like something that's really cool. And also, it's also really good to see them say, like, hey, these games are important in our stories, and people remembering these characters, these little moments, like, gets lost when you have to wait six months for an episode. Like, it's it's cool that it's coming out so quickly. Yeah, I also want to point out, it's 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 a big deal that one of the two main characters is transgender, like, in general, yeah. because uh, uh, transgender people have really, really, like, poor and limited representation in popular media anyway um but i think it's a super big deal that it's a trans man um because even amongst the almost non-existent representation of trans people in media like trans men are invisible um you know so people who are assigned female at birth and then you know come to find themselves as as male and male presenting um and and this is really important because like uh, it's in within queer spaces like it's hard because we're kind of all getting the short end of the stick in one way or another but just in the same way that like cis straight people or not cis straight cis queer people like myself still get a whole lot more representation than trans people as a whole like what trans representation there is is almost always trans women um, and almost never trans men. Um, and it's just, again, it's beautiful. It's nice. It's very different. Um, and there's a whole lot of people um, who are now seeing a fictional character that is like them for the very first time in their lives. Um, yeah. And that's, that's really meaningful, you know? And, and yeah. also just in general, don't not write great characters and great stories, just as a baseline, just as a small setting point. Yep. So that's already a great partnership. Very, very intrigued as to how that turns out. For sure. Justin? I also just want to say that um, two things, like piggybacking off, like I think Don't Nod will, you know, very much do right by this character. Um, they are they are a studio I really trust to get those sorts of things right and to do their due diligence and to take any criticism that might come their way in stride. Um, and like, I, you know, sometimes people try and they fail and then don't do well when you know people come at them and don't not i think is a very good um is a very good studio to be handling this sort of subject matter and i also think it's really cool to see one of the platform holders um putting forward um the, you know the publishing for the ga for a game like this um i think i think that was probably the highlight of all of the xo19 announcements for me uh is just is just seeing this like i i think it's going to be great for the team hopefully i'll be able to play it sometime um i i don't have a pc or an xbox right now um we have but... a platform for you <laughs> and i yeah, guess, so and I guess that we'll, we'll get to that in a minute but um yeah yeah, yeah like uh th this this is the the um the announcement that got me really excited and i think you guys all hit the nail on the head for the various reasons so um i'm excited yeah well, and and to to kind of to kind of lean into what what Sam uh, alluded to, uh, so one of the big reveals about XCloud, which is like currently in beta, which is Xbox's equivalent of uh, uh, game streaming from the cloud, uh, is that if you are a Game Pass subscriber, you'll you will be able to pull all of those Game Pass subscriptions to your phone and then play wherever you are. So theoretically, Justin, if you didn't own an Xbox, you could pay one dollar to play this game on your phone. Uh, and then and then you could be done. But the other part of that that's really cool is they also announced today uh, that you could use any controller you wanted. So you could use a DualShock to play uh, Xbox games, which is like kind of a pretty fucking big deal. That's really cool for me because like I've mentioned it before, but I have issues with my wrist and the DualShock is far like the only controller I can use without hurting my wrists. So yeah. like that's actually really cool that... Um, you know, you're going to be able to use a DualShock with um, xCloud. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like a huge deal that, like, I, I guess what's... There's still a lot of questions around xCloud, right? Like, like it's still early in testing, and, like, uh, uh, one of the things they haven't clarified is uh, excluding Game Pass, games that you just you know you bought digitally like uh how will that work will there be a fee like it, it, will there be a fee for me if i'm at work to play my games at home right they said there, you'll like, be able to do it but they they need to clarify that half of it, there's a price point um but but it's nice to know that you know the 10 or 15 bucks you're paying for game pass or game pass ultimate will translate to free um um xcloud stuff which is cool and it's interesting to watch that can kind of continue to roll out 
Um, but I guess uh, going from from X Cloud and now touching on the Game Pass, it was also a huge, huge uh, Game Pass like library update today, right? Um, what there's is like it? this weird, there's like a weird indie studio or indie series. I don't know if you guys have heard of it called Final Fantasy. And I guess they're gonna put like ten of these games on Game Pass. I haven't heard of them. I don't know if there's anything good there. But I mean, maybe it's something to look into when it comes. What do you guys think? <laughs> what was the full? I missed the full list. Of it Final was uh, final, basically every Final Fantasy game since 7. So 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 13, 2, and 15. <laughs> I don't know about Lightning Returns. Lightning Returns. And then obviously 11 and 14 are the MMOs. Uh, but they also said 14 is 14 coming. is coming to Xbox, which is, is pretty coming, big. Which is awesome, and I'll go ahead and let you guys know when that does arrive. I'll be sure to give it a try. And if I like it, I might even end up playing with Jeff and John and Brandon. Just Hell yeah. Cool. And then, but like beyond Final Fantasy, which is like a huge, a huge thing. And those things are all, they're, they're all going right to Game Pass, which is like, do, are all of those games currently available? Or are these like ports and Game Pass? I, I think those games already have Xbox ports. All okay. And I think, I, yes. 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 Are games. the 13 games on backwards compatibility? They are. Yes. And the 13 yeah. games actually got 4k updates so it's yeah. actually the best way to play they're x enhanced they, or whatever they even did some sort of sorcery where they enhanced the cinematics and i still yeah, don't understand they, they really well did what the, what they did is that's actually really interesting and i have the answer for you how they did that um so uh you know last gen going all the way back 360 was on dvd ps3 was on blu-ray so on 360 file sizes were an issue so um in ff13 they had like 720p low bit rate cg cutscene uh when they updated the uh 13 games for backwards compatibility they actually went to square enix and got the 1080p higher bit rate versions that were on the ps3 disc um and so you actually download those and it uses the higher the the like alternate uh cg cutscenes which is cool yeah yeah, I mean it's it's like a crazy it's a crazy weird cool thing with and the, like honestly those were like one of the final things they did with Bat Compat before they kind of uh, uh, shut that program down earlier this year but it was kind of a big deal. Um, but beyond I'll, I'll that, correct you. I got in to correct you. They didn't shut it down. It's been put on pause. They are planning to resume it after Scarlet comes out. They just can't focus uh, any effort on it right now. Okay. Okay. Well, so yeah, Zach. We'll put, all right, all right, I'll walk it back. So the other things that are ports and will be day and date uh, uh, for Game Pass are Yakuza 0, uh, Kiwami 1, and... Are they both considered Kiwami 1 and Kiwami 2? Right? Derek, is, Derek is excited. <laughs> Yakuza's a big um, fucking deal. Yeah. And yeah. anybody with an Xbox who does not play Yakuza 0, I'm coming to your house and I'm going <laughs> to sit on your head. Sorry, Derek, wow. the dogs are back. <laughs> they please, the please door do just blew that, open. To be fair, I did not. Uh, I, I would time? definitely try them. I guess. Is this the first time that Yakuza has been on Xbox at all? Like, it was never on. Yes, it's been Correct. PlayStation exclusive up till this point. Well, and there was PC, a, There have been a couple ports to Nintendo systems. I think the Wii U in Japan got ports of a couple. But, like, it's mostly been a very PlayStation-focused series. I'm very glad for more people to be able to get to play. Um, yeah. I, I'm still working my way through the series. I discovered it with Zero, um, like I think a lot of people um, outside of Japan have, and immediately fell in love with that series. I'm so excited for more people to get a chance to play those. Um, and I, I think people are really going to like them. And by the way, uh, you can actually catch, if you go back to our videos, uh, we got John to play Yakuza 0 for the first time for a couple hours last week um, for Extra Life. So for those of you who are curious about the game, please go check out that stream. It was really good. It was really fun. Yeah. So. yeah Yakuza, Beyond that, Yakuza is one of those series that's just been daunting to me of like, oh my God, there's how many games and it's going to take how many hours and do I want to spend money on this? But if they're coming to Game Pass, I will definitely give them a try. And I'll honestly, yeah. try. they're not that big of a time investment if you don't like go crazy in the side quest stuff. The main story yeah. is not that long. So if you get in and you maybe play with a couple of side quests from here and there, like as the ones you care to try and do, like the main story is worth the price of admission on its own. So, yeah. It's and it's a big deal and like I wouldn't be shocked if we don't see more Yakuza games get ported over into the future, but I think this is a good place to start. Um I, yeah, Justin. 
Aren't the older Kingdom Hearts games also final, yeah. finally making it over to Xbox? Which it was, th- it was really ki- funny yeah, to listen ki- to them pronounce those out loud. I've never heard anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Kingdom yeah, Hearts um, 1.5 Final Mix 2.8 Remix of Hearts. I, I don't even fucking know. Recode it, yeah. Good, good, good um, I'm, not, but, I'm not going to be touching those. But, <laughs> you um, but yeah, 3 got released on Xbox, but the the previous ones didn't so now that whole series will be available on xbox as well yeah honestly so, it was a huge it was a huge day for them Go ahead. yeah and that's i think that's one of the been the one of the big criticisms is like the lack of japanese game representation on xbox so it was cool to see them come at the end and like final fantasy yakuza and um kingdom hearts, uh, kingdom hearts like you know all those yeah the type of games that xbox has been missing um it's good to give them a chance on there Right. Uh, but then those go so so uh uh sorry, Kingdom Kingdom Hearts, uh Yakuza and Final Fantasy are all coming in twenty twenty. Uh but more more recently or, or sooner rather I should say, uh we will be seeing Halo Reach is coming uh December third, which is huge. It's PC and Xbox uh, day and date. Um, but then also, uh, I just wanted to give a shout out to one of my favorite indie games from a couple years ago. Uh, uh, Red Strings Club is getting ported to console. I, I think it came out on Switch a couple months ago, but now it's coming to Xbox, and that game fucking rules. Uh, so people should play that. Are there other are there other games that are coming out soon that people should keep an eye on? For people Rage Two, if you didn't oh, buy yeah. it, is coming out. Uh, I didn't touch it That's... yet, but I like I like the original Rage, so I'll give it a shot. Uh, if you are unholy and you have not played the witcher 3 yet for some ridiculous <laughs> reason <laughs> witcher 3 is being added so please take this opportunity and cleanse yourself of your sins i will forgive you Geralt will forgive you and then it's, uh it's Remnant witcher from 3. The Ashes, which oh, is sorry. actually as well and then there's a couple of indie games but i, I can't remember them off the top of my, my head friend pedro, say, i think my friend pedro is, is being ported to uh oh cool yeah. Is Witcher three Witcher three is the complete edition too, right? Which has very uh, I good. I didn't see that. I uh, thought it was just the I, base game. I oh. thought it was just the base game, but I don't okay, know. Do you, I'll have to double check. Do you that. play the base game on like uh, uh, and and this is this is an interesting question, right? If you play something like the base game for Witcher three on a service like Game Pass, yeah, you then you buy the buy a DLC. How? Which is like thirty bucks. But can and you game buy pass it without like, owning the game? Yeah. 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 Oh, and you get, well, it's an easy answer, huh? DLC or microtransactions or whatever that you buy. Well, there we go. Yeah, yeah, as far as Game Pass works, like it basically treats it like you own the game as long as your sub is active. So you, you have all the same license entitlement. And gotcha. Things like that. It's the kind of things I don't. I have Game Pass for PC, but not for um, Xbox. So like, it's the kind of thing that I could just imagine any of the big game companies not thinking through because that's usually how that works. So props Microsoft. Well, it's really just a way to keep making sure they get money. I mean, it's like, it's like how like gears of war five is like a game. I love Uh that's in game pass, but it's also riddled with microtransactions because, yeah. and they're all, they're all cosmetic, but it's real with microtransactions. And it's for that exact reason, which is like, and it's there. Ways. Yep, exactly. It's there. Um, is, are there other game? Like what, what is the big thing besides like, okay, wasteland? Well, I guess I'm going to pull it back. One of the things I want to touch on uh, was that, like, this show is all about what Microsoft is doing the first half of 2020. And that's because... what I told you when I said there was a particular theme. With the exception right. of Everwild, this is all about, hey, here's the first half of next year and what that looks like for the Xbox One. Right, it's like exactly. a good Nintendo Direct, but Microsoft, like, they just nailed it. Yeah, well, but, like, what was cool about what I saw was that one of the things that Microsoft has historically done poorly all-gen was that they haven't really been pacing out their games, and it's been like, oh, here's two games in a year, and they're both coming in the fall. So what was really cool about uh, uh, Game Pass today is that we have, they announced, so so Ori and the Will of the Wisp, uh, which looks great, is coming out in February. In March, uh, we are seeing, um, it's not Minecraft, it's uh, Ble- Bleeding Edge, and then we are seeing the next month, Minecraft Dungeons, and then in May, we are seeing Wasteland 3, and somewhere in there is that grounded game. So we are seeing like four to five Microsoft first pub- first party published studios in the final year of a, of a Xbox One being the, their main flagship console. Like, that's pretty fucking rare uh, yeah. for the end of a gen. I mean, and that's all. Why in the rare. summer. Sorry, Justin, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but just like throw that one in there too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like, that was like, um, I, I remember reading, you know, a few people 
um, you know, talking at the beginning of this um, generation, even before we had the big, you know, Xbox One kerfuffle <laughs> at the beginning of the generation, there were people that were already saying like, hey, Sony's still releasing like a lot of really good PS3 games and Microsoft's like stopped releasing 360 games a couple years before the end. Um, and so like, it's really good to see this kind of continued support. Um, and it feels like a very renewed support. Um, they like on top of all the acquisitions, it seems like they still are like, Hey, we're going to have a bunch of small games coming in the short term. So we're not just waiting years and years for these big AAA projects to get done, um, to get out to people. Um, it, I think it's like a, a good statement of commitment to, uh, like current users as well as future um, people. Because like, you know, a couple of years ago, people were questioning, is Microsoft going to continue, you know, making Xbox and stuff? Make so it it's like, yeah, like people. Um, and honestly, if there had been different management, I wouldn't have been surprised to see, you know, things go in a different way. But like, this was just a very good statement from Microsoft that's like, we've heard your complaints. And we're really focusing on um, continuing on this trajectory. Um, I, I, th- I think it was probably one of the better events they've had in a long time. Um, I, I think, you know, it was even kind of in some ways more exciting than E3. I, I, guess, I guess I have a question kind of moving on from, from XO, although I think we'll keep dipping back into it. Uh, and I, I think I want to throw it to Jeff first. Um, what do you think, if anything, Google can do from here to... to differentiate themselves but also still feel like a viable option um well i mean google has an advantage uh in that you know i don't know all the details of what x cloud is going to work on and how it's going to work but google's big pitch is if you have chrome or chromecast you can play games on it which is a lot of well... devices. Yeah, yeah not a, i mean they've got there's an with- there's a big asterisk on that right now yeah but i mean that's their eventual pitch right obviously it's not ready at launch um but that that assuming it gets there, that's a big differentiator. So Google's problem right now, you know, and this is like you mentioned, Zach, we don't know what's going to happen with our digital Xbox One games, if we're going to be able to play those on Xbox. But Google's problem right now, which our friend Matt Pescatel has touched on, is they don't really have an audience because they seem to be under the impression that all of a sudden people who don't own a console are going to dish out $60 per game a la carte to play them uh, through stadia which there's no evidence that anyone's going to do that and most people who already have a copy of uh shadow of the tomb raider that's like two years old now are not going to go drop 60 dollars just to play it on their chromecast so uh that's their main problem but i think if they sort out the issues like they've already said it's going to support all these other controllers like the ps4 controller whatever will work it's just again none of this is ready at launch so their launch is a write-off but they could still turn it around six, eight months down the road, if they get their messaging in order, if they get this shit fixed. Um, But they really have to set themselves apart. And I think the way that I do that is the um, ease of access and the amount of dices that you can play it on. But I really think the subscription model is the way to go. I never, there's no reality where I see paying full price for games to only play them on Stadia is going to work. I think they need to say, you pay a monthly fee um, and you can basically just play the games you already own portably, or you can pay a small upgrade fee, have some cross library sharing. But I mean, I don't even know the logistics of how they'd get publishers and manufacturers on board with that, considering they're competitors too. Yeah. Sorry, I mean, that was a just... long winded answer. No, 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 you're yeah, good. I think we're just trying to solve some mod things in the chat. Uh, I guess rather than stutter through it, I'm just going to throw it to Justin, who seems uh, ready to fucking go. So. So, he was like, yes, uh, I got this shit. So, like, I've been, you know, skeptical of Stadia <laughs> since the beginning, but I, I've been trying to keep an open mind with it. However, this past week, um, which, it's the week before launch, right? If I'm... The ostensible yeah. launch. Is it next week or is it the week after? I thought it was... It could Maybe be out now. I have no way of knowing. <laughs> Supposedly, it's the 19th if we count launch as meaning the Founders Edition and only the Founders Edition as ordered with the Founders Edition. Yeah, so um, I'm going to start by going through um, uh, an AMA that the Stadia team did on Reddit um, yesterday. And, um, well, it's not great. 
Um, so I'm gonna go through this, and then I'm gonna go to Stadia launch. Um, I think these are important pieces of information to have before we discuss Stadia. So, um, uh, part on the AME, AMA, like there were people complaining about uh, shipping um, issues, and one of the guys offered to hand deliver kits in the bay area because uh <laughs> the shipping was such a mess um no. not uh, even a little bit so he was asking people for th- their addresses <laughs> no <laughs> how is google so fucking dumb for being one of like, the biggest companies in the world also, Google, you have my fucking address. Yeah, uh, yes, you got all our addresses. <laughs> that too. Um, oh. So the achievement system does not have a UI. It's in there, but you cannot see it. You'll eventually be able to look at them once it gets an update. Um, current Chromecast cast Ultras, even if you have a Chromecast Ultra, you will not be able to use stadia on launch day it's only the specific chromecast that will come with the founders edition so you have to have the stadia founders edition ultra chromecast to be able to use it um and if you try to use it on your phone it has to be wired it's not wireless even though it wirelessly connecting to the server was like part of the main pitch for how they were combating latency. So eventually there will be an update that will allow it to do the thing that it was pitched to. Do. Uh, family sharing isn't going to work for Stadia. Um, they recommend just going and buying a second copy of the game so that uh, love, to pay people... do- love to pay $120 so me and my son can play this game. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> on two separate uh, devices. The Stadia developer that was um, responding to questions about things like, when will iOS um, support uh, Stadia? Response was, oh man, I wish I knew. <laughs> no. Ask me anything. No! no. It could not like, be the actual thing they said. Uh, it, li- is. it is highlighted as the first... I mean, there's more to that response, but that is the... <laughs> Um. Hey, can somebody just reach out to our friend, uh, uh, Phil Phil Harrison, and just ask him if he'll delay it? Maybe. <laughs> like maybe we just delay it. By the way, know. Stadia is the perfect place for Phil Harrison with his uh oh. with his legacy. Um. Uh, there might be one title with Stream Connect by the end of the year. One. State yeah. Share and Crowd Play aren't coming till next year. Um. Currently, there's no web I UI for buying games on Stadia. You have to use phone app. Um, Fuck so, this. so yeah, that whole like watching a game on YouTube and then buying it, yeah, that ain't happening. Um, you y- you can only buy things, I think, with Google Play gift card. Um, God, wait, there's no credit card. I. That I'm unclear on. Don't quote me on that one, but... Okay. Uh, no, no I, I think, to, to be fair, I think they are taking credit cards. It's just that they're also taking Google Play credit. Okay, so okay. Oh. All right, program, I, I, misinterp- can... I misinterpreted oh. this. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, the Buddy Pass, which is supposed to be a Founders Edition feature that allows you to gift Stadia to a friend for three months. Yeah, that's not coming at launch. Um... So it, can I can I ask if nothing's available at launch? Can we even say it's actually launching next week? Hey, well, um, <laughs> well, Jeff, let me read to you the launch lineup uh, for Stadia. Um, oh, you mean the two it, Raider games? <laughs> shh, shh, shh. Don't ruin He's the moment. You. I um, you said there's nothing available, and well, let let me read to you the in the entire. Stadia launch lineup. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Uh, Destiny 2 The Collection. Guilt. Just Dance 2020. Kine. Mortal Kombat 11. Red Red Redemption 2. Rise of the Tomb Raider. Samurai Showdown. Shadow of the Tomb Raider Definitive Edition. Thumper. And Tomb Raider Definitive Edition. Hold up, because I've got fucking (laughs) 
beef about Samurai Showdown, okay? <laughs> oh, I have not heard okay. of Samurai Showdown. <laughs> Samurai Showdown is a legendary fighting game series from SNK. This revival is super hot shit. Um, it is, like, PC-wise, <laughs> like, from what I've heard, exclusive to Google Stadia, at least for a while. Uh, not necessarily forever, but it is for now. And it's on fucking Stadia. Anybody who plays fighting games at all, like the they, you add the tiniest bit of latency, and fighting games become hey. unplayable. That is one of the hottest fighting games to be released in ages, and it's stuck, like off console versions. It's stuck on fucking streaming services. Listen, Derek. The two people who are playing Google Stadia at launch. Phil Harrison and Phil Harrison's roommate are going to love that game. Well, they they won't because there will be half a second of input lag. Well, so, so the good news, though, the good news is, Jeff, if Red Dead isn't fixed, baby, I've got some <laughs> service for you. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to make a lot of jokes about the whole Tomb Raider thing. Uh, a quarter Leave of Tomb Raider alone, alone, Justin. Justin. A cor- a cor- I like I, I should pull out like a notebook and go. I was gonna say, like, <laughs> go yeah. Um, so a quarter of their launch lineup are the recent trilogy, uh, Tomb Raider games. Nice. Um, recent which, in a very uh, relative sense, by the way. Well, yes. Um, this generation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, the newest one is two years old. Anyway, uh, um, so they're going to cost a whole lot more than the console versions. You could probably buy all three of them for the price that Shadow of the Tomb Raider is going to cost on Stadia. And I'm going to fucking have to stream. check. <laughs> uh, they doing some math. It's, Wait, um, do we know if they're going to be 60 bucks? That They're going to be more than the, like, price-to-go copies of, like... The, I mean, like those go, those go down to like single digit cash on like flash sales and stuff. Um, those <laughs> games get cheap. Shadow They're gonna cost more on out. Stadia. Yo, someone in chat pointed out <laughs> that right now you can play all three of those games. On, if you have an Android device, you can play all three of those games on your X on on X Cloud on your phone right now for like one dollar a month. Yeah. God damn it. Sorry, Zach. Did I tune out a bit earlier? Is X Cloud out today? It's well, been we're doing out on the, the X Cloud preview. The Android, yeah. Yeah. The, 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 preview. Which I will just point out, given what Justin just so eloquently said, I will point out that X Cloud is in preview and it has over fifty games on it right now. Just gonna yeah. throw that out there. I feel like um. I feel like like the launch of Google Stadia is honestly a win for Ouya, if anything. <laughs> like, <laughs> Shout just... out to Google Stadia for making the Xbox look good. Yeah. Oh. It's yeah, so so yeah, um I've talked to several I only know a few people that were considering trying out Stadia. None of them are keeping their pre orders, unsurprisingly. Um, and well, that does mean you, that they're going to be uh, have an easier time shipping them to people now. There's more that's, available. That's true. That's true. They're not going to have to have Norman Reedus load them up get easier. on his on his backpack and run it across the country. My uh, uh, <laughs> my my coworker is getting one, so I will be sure to give you guys impressions. She's she's going to let me play it on lunch break next week. Okay, cool. Uh, I, I, I'm still interested in the tech behind it. Um, uh, obviously. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, you know, I'm somebody that is very particular about video quality, so streaming video, even for movies and stuff, is has never fully satisfied me, and I'm not sure if it will, I'm especially not sure if it will for games, but I am interested in what goes into it, because I think it's something that'll work eventually, but right now it does not seem like a compelling service. Yeah, it, uh doesn't seem great we have listen we we have several uh questions that we've got through twitter is there anything else on exo or google stadia that any of us want to touch on before we move on yes yeah, sam uh, yeah so there's one thing we missed earlier and i'll keep this really brief because i don't know You're how fine. many people Take care about it 
But Age of Empires 4, we finally saw gameplay, and yeah. it looks amazing. It's like Age of Empires 2, but way better graphics, and they've expanded it. There's more units, bigger cities, buildings crumbling down when trebuchets hit and armies charge. I love it. And they also revealed that the team, they've, like, they've assembled a studio to particularly maintain the Age of Empires franchise called World's Edge, which is headed up by Shannon Loftus, who was actually wearing a Wololo necklace, which is just awesome. <laughs> Yes. Uh, and, and also, Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition is out today. Yes. Right? Yes. And I got to say, and coming to the Age of Empires section of XO19 was. Oh, it was beautiful. I I don't know about anybody else here. Um, I grew up on Age of Empires. Um, it is one of my favorite series of all time. Age of Empires 2 is one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, it is. A, a, it was tremendously impactful in the original Age of Empires on me as a young person in like getting interested in history um, and like global history, not just European history. Um, it is, I mean, I have all of these memories of like land parties. Um, so it's like for the Age of Empires 2 launch trailer for them to actually have like the land party for the original Age of Empires 2. Uh, you know, it's kind of like, hey, this is how some of y'all grew. I was like, yes, that was me. Um, and also, Age of Empires 4, going back to that same time frame, is really, I think, really important and a really big deal. Because back, oh my god, we're going back in an exceptionally long time. But when Age of Empires 4 was first announced, I feel like a decade ago. Um, this was not too long after Age of Empires 3 came out. The roadmap showed that Age of Empires 4 was going to be, like, modern military, and Age of Empires 5 was going to be... They had also announced 5, and 5 was going to be, like, sci-fi future, kind of Halo-y. Because yeah. the idea was each game was moving forward an era, and it's kind of a cool concept, I guess, but there's a reason Age like of Empires 2 is so legendary, and it's, it's so good to see them go back to that era... Um, you know, and see them highlight like the various cultures of the world again. Ugh, I just didn't they add a few campaigns to Definitive Edition? Am I, or Definitive am I Edition has yet another uh, new campaign and new civilization, uh, which is yeah, it's fucking the wild. Con. So, age. This is the most hilarious thing. Age of Empires two launched in the nineties. Um, the cool. Age of Empires two like HD re release several years ago suddenly started getting official expansions that never existed for the original game. Um, so they just made like three more expansions. And now that they've done definitive edition, it has yet another expansion baked in. So like, it, and it's one of my favorite, I, like it's one of my favorite things I've ever seen happen to a super famous legacy game to see this super meaningful title, not only get brought back, but then just get official expansions year after year, um, you know, 10 years after it died is just very cool. Yeah, for sure. I'm a dwarf. I'm sorry. Gonna... No, 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 no. It is. It's fine. Fucking... I'm with you. Like that is what yeah. gave me my love of history is when at five years old, my parents handed me age of empires too and said, Hey, here you go. And I played it and I fell in love with it. So I think we're ready to move into Twitter questions. If, if everybody's, fine with that yeah uh, i i want to start uh i think i think with justin on this one if he's ready yeah justin, sure this one comes from storm again i want to okay. know favorite video game soundtrack Ooh, that's a that's a tough one it's guitar um, hero 2 isn't it well uh <laughs> so two immediately come to mind am i allowed to answer two yes i allow okay it. So Elite Beat Agents, which has simultaneously the best and worst soundtrack ever. It's Just the best. Yeah, it's it's a bunch of weird covers. Material like, Girl is a bop, and I will not stand for slander. Yes, Material Girl <laughs> is wonderful. That that soundtrack has Bowie on it. It has uh, Queen has Rolling Avril Stones. Levine on it. Skater Boy. Uh, it has uh, the anthem. Uh, the Anthem by Good Charlotte. Uh, it has Jumpin' Jack Flash. Like, it's the most all-over-the-place soundtrack. And it works brilliantly with that game. Um, it's one of my favorite games ever. 
Uh, it's so much fun. If you guys have a DS, track that game down. Cause it's super good. The other one, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of ones that I think are objectively better, but just one of the ones that popped right into my mind uh, was uh, Metal Gear Rising. Um, that game had the hypest soundtrack, and I don't think we'll ever get another game that's just like that. Like, the fact that the audio was even synced with, um, like, the stages of boss you. fights. All right, listen up. Listen up. No. I came in here to say one Boo. thing. No. no. Let Justin finish. No. Justin. Oh, is Justin still talking? Justin, please, go ahead. Here's so how we do this. We mute John. <laughs> 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 um yeah so like like each stage of the boss boss fight more instruments came on until you know the vocals kicked in and it was just such a great marriage of music and gameplay that was silly and over the top but it absolutely worked and it made that game like it made that game in the boss fights which were already great so much more memorable um i love that game sounds Sounds pretty solid. Fine. Let let Peepaw John talk. <laughs> uh, I just came Rest in here to say I'm I'm leaving after. I just came in here to say that Final Fantasy VI has the greatest uh, soundtrack of all time. Uh, well, yeah, I didn't yeah. see that. When you consider no 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 when you consider no 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 when you consider uh we consider the fact that Dancing Mad is the best final boss theme of all time, then you've got obviously the um the uh the orchestra uh you know uh with you know Celeste singing her classic song. Uh, I mean, look, I, there's there's really no fun. The only thing that comes close is Chrono Trigger or Near Automata. That's it. Like, Final Fantasy VI has the most iconic soundtrack of all time. And with that, later. Fucking boomers. Did that happened. We've just been <laughs> Okay, okay, boomer. <laughs> God. God. Okay, Jeff. so who, who wants to take this next? Uh, I, I, I don't have any. I don't, I don't know music. Jeff, talk to me about your favorite jams, I guess. Uh, yeah, I was just giving a shout out to like uh, basically all the Tony Hawk Pro Skater games the, for licensed soundtracks, uh, at least one through three. Uh, they're all awesome. Um, I don't know for like original scores, it's really tough for me to pick because like so many games have a unique um, set of tracks and music that fits that game, but it's really hard for me to put one over the other. Um, the Last Guardian has like an amazing score. Um, I didn't like Near Automata as much as some people, but that one, uh, I'm sure a lot of people would vote for. The Last of Us, of course. Like, that music is iconic. Like, to me, what makes, like, uh, good music or, like, good soundtrack in a game is if I could hear something for, like, a second and instantly associate it with that game. Um, yeah, like, two two notes and I can immediately yeah. identify Last of Us song. <laughs> Uh, I guess I got a couple um, that, that I could go with. Um, so I will say um, my favorite overall soundtrack, um, I'm going to go with Anarchy Reigns, uh, which is not a, not a particularly great game, even as a platinum stan. Like, Anarchy Reigns is a little rough around the edges, but Anarchy Reigns has the most ridiculous fucking indie hip-hop soundtrack and i and i and some of it is stupid as shit some of that shit is dorky but oh yeah yeah no but i i, I agree that, that that's that's deeply. an interesting choice that is a that is a soundtrack that goes from genuine hard motherfuckers to two dorky <laughs> asians rapping about science <laughs> like it's the wildest <laughs> soundtrack but i fucking love it um and it gets me pumped always um but now I won't give this like best total soundtrack, but um one song is all it takes. Um Super Mario Galaxy, Gusty Garden Galaxy, uh, which is that famous first stage. Uh that 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 theme has been reused for a couple of other things throughout the Mario franchise since. Um man, like this sounds corny as hell to say, but I remember loading up Mario Galaxy for the first time and getting to that level. And it, and it, it kind of get throwing you into the first actual level of the game. And that track was playing and it was the first time I'd ever heard it, but I had known it all my life. Like, I don't know. That's, that's so cheesy, but 
it it's such a beautiful piece of music and it resonates with me so much on such like a primal level so um so i gotta give i gotta give mario galaxy some love sam died sam is he's there turned, he is. He, okay oh, he's back sam talk to me about your soundtrack I'm here. you're kind of you're flickering a little bit but you're here and you're here in essence okay so there's actually a lot of really good video game soundtracks that I love. I mean, Metal Gear Rising, Justin's absolutely right. Just, ooh, that's hot. Uh, there's a ton of good stuff. Mass Effect, the original Mass Effect, and even Mass Effect 2 have some great somber tracks. But for me, it's like, what gets me emotional, right? What gets me nostalgic? What gets me to just stop what I'm doing and almost shed a tear and think about those memories I have? And so for me, it's two games. One is the soundtrack to Halo 3. I just, I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, the opening music, the frantic, hectic violins as you're escaping the flood, the reprise of the first game's theme, but it's ever so more orchestral and epic as you escape the halo that's collapsing all around you. I just love it. And then the other one is uh, the soundtrack to The Last of Us. I hear those strings, man, and it's just, ooh. Uh, I, I barely play guitar, and I learned how to play that opening main track because <laughs> I just love it so much. It, it's so perfect. But, but we get a lot of good video game soundtracks these days. Nier Automata is another great one. Mm -hmm. But uh, but I'd go with those two. Am I the only one who hasn't talked about their favorite one at this point? I can pull some out. That is correct. You uh, said you sure. don't know so, what music is. I don't know what music is. Um, I, I say <laughs> the drum set behind him. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I guess. Okay, okay. Uh, so... Uh, the DK rap alone carries a lot of weight. This is pandering to Rar now. Like, but this is not true. He's not wrong. Is, listen, a, I mean, it's he's a slap. not. It's a slap. It, it's it slaps. It's a great. It's a bop. We gotta listen. It's a good song. I threw it in chat for people who don't know. It's a great. It's a great song. Uh, but also, uh, in in the same vein that that Sam uh, Sam was in okay. Halo Two, I. Uh, instead of the piano of Halo Three, I like kind of the guitars of of Halo Two. They're they're kind of nice. Um, so, yeah, but somewhere, you know, I like to define myself as someone who oscillates between the DK rap and Halo 2. Um, so, can't pin me down, you know? Here we go. Oh, Zach, how drunk do we have to get you for you to perform the DK rap for us? It, profoundly. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, I cannot, I cannot do PAX East this year, but next, <laughs> next time... There's a gathering of SDGC, much of the okay. gathering of Juggalos. We don't know what will happen. You, gentlemen, you have your mission. <laughs> you just need to accept it. <sighs> God. Okay. All right. I can pull up the next question. Somebody just dis be distracting while I find the next question through my phone. Oh, I should have left the DK rep going. <laughs> 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 I was broadcasting it over the door. No, <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, uh, so we'll we'll just touch on this quickly. I mean, it's it's kind of reiterating it, but somebody wanted to know. Uh, uh, Blam on Twitter wanted to know Yakuza and Final Fantasy. Big deal for Game Pass. I feel like that's like unanimously like yeah, yeah. yeah. Seems like a big seems like a big one, a big turning point for for everybody. Um, and then uh, uh, Shane, who been watching front of the pod for a long time, Shane asks, uh, "Is Game Pass the best deal in gaming?" This one's kind of subjective, and I feel like we've—I feel like I actually feel a little bit icky how how up we've been on Game Pass tonight, but it might be. It's good, and here's the thing, though: it's good for a lot of. Oh, I hate the word gamers, <laughs> but like, <laughs> and it's good oh. for consumers like the the disdain in your voice I know, I fucking <laughs> hate it. but like for real uh i have access to even just game pass again for pc like i don't even have like the big boy even better console version but i have access to so much for a very very affordable price like for a lot of of particularly lower income families like game pass could be a really big deal for people who, who can't buy a $60 game every month, but you know what they can afford the fucking, what is it? 15 a month on console? Like 10, for game pass? Uh, uh, yeah. 10 for regular 15 for ultimate 10, right. 10, they get $10 a month and they get access. I mean, like that's a big deal for, for mm. lower and medium income families. You know, I mean, it's a big deal for broke adult millennials. Like, so I'll, I'll praise it. It's good for us. 
Justin Bustin. So um, I, I'm definitely going to echo what Derek is saying about um, lower income people. I, th- I think it's also going to be really good for like uh, younger people because it, like it allows them to really check out a lot of stuff that they probably play normally, uh, which I think is really cool. I, and I do think uh, Game Pass is an excellent deal. You know, I've been praising it tonight. However, the discussion around Game Pass, every now and then somebody will start talking. And it's just like an ad. Like, I, I've been like, t- like, I recommended like Control to somebody and somebody else popped in and was like, oh, that game seems cool, but I have so many games to play on my Xbox One all-in-one entertainment system thanks to thanks to Game Pass. It's such a great deal. I don't have time for control. Please don't do that. I will fight you. <laughs> Good thing. No human being is ever going to do that. I'm going to write a bot that does that for you. And it, but it's triggered based off of words. And I'm going to have it rotate accounts so you can't block them all. <laughs> um but yeah like uh so don't be that guy but um uh, <laughs> but yeah Maybe no it's robot. cool it's a good it's a good subscription it seems good uh so i think now's the time where we're gonna start diving right into our analyzing of the last 30 seconds of the mandalorian's first episode so everybody uh get ready as we jump i, into I haven't seen it yet I'm fucking with you. We're absolutely not talking about yes. Mandalorian. We're, we're 100% not talking about Mandalorian. <laughs> just kidding. I had a moment where I was sure you were kidding, but even so, I was just frozen with fear. Like, I, I actually think I saw two different fight or flight reflexes just. <laughs> <laughs> I can watch it tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> no, no, but I do think that we all owe ourselves um, a little bit of self care this weekend. Take two hours and watch the Lady and the Tramp uh, live action film that Disney. Has God made. damn it, Zach! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we can have a spoiler cast no. on that. Sorry, uh, it's just it's just got to be. Spoiler what it alert! Is. I'm betting the Siamese cats were taken out. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I th- okay, I think we might be out of topics, and I haven't seen questions in you guys. I think we might we might be going to bed early. Go I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. We're gonna give we're gonna give chat we're gonna give chat a couple minutes. I guess the last thing I'll say um, is Fallen Order is out tomorrow. The embargo is up at midnight tonight. Uh, it's weird that EA is just like, hey, there's a new game coming out. Uh, and it's from the Star Wars intellectual property. Have you guys heard we of forgot, that? We forgot to, to we forgot to press uh, publish on the advertisements, so that's nah. unfortunate. The only thing know, I can think of is that they just decided Star Wars markets itself, and they didn't need to do anything. But, which but totally is totally possible. Is e- yeah. EA, EA's marketing has been horrible the past couple of years. Like yeah. even for the even for their big games, like like Battlefield got a lot of. Come on, guys! Oh. Ask these. Shut ask these up. Guys. No. Ask these guys away. a question. Don't let them talk that early. The oh, thing God. about boomers, the thing about <laughs> Dad, boomers, he was Dad's so loud not letting I us go to him, bed early. And you could hear him on somebody else's headphones. Oh my God. <laughs> Thing, the thing about boomers is that they'll show up where they're not wanted and they'll talk louder than everybody else. It's really frustrating. Um, God. Uh. Yeah, also, yeah so, Pokemon comes out I was tomorrow. talking about EA's marketing. Like, yeah. like okay. Battlefield Wait. got a lot of coverage. However, I didn't think the quality of marketing was as good as the previous game. And like so many other things have gotten just straight up like non-existent marketing. Like Need for Speed Heat, people were like, oh yeah, I'm playing I Need for Speed came Heat. Out. I didn't know it was coming out. It was announced. And then all of a sudden, people are like, yeah, it's out tomorrow. It, it, it's awful. Like, I'm not trying to brag, but like, part of my job is literally keeping track of when video games come out. And I forgot that game existed until like a couple of weeks ago. Someone's like, hey, Sam, write this up. We got a release date. It's like, hmm, what was that? I, I don't know what they're on. I don't know what they're on. But I do think Fallen Order does, if it's a good game and early previews seem to indicate it is overall, I think it's going to market itself through word of mouth and the fact that it's Star Wars. Yeah. Well, I think what happened is that EA put one uh, folder in Google Drive, and it had uh, Need for Speed Heat and Fallen Order's assets in it, and somehow it just... <laughs> <laughs> that shit happens. I mean, Drive is an easy place to move your folder, so, I mean, it just happens. Yeah, no, that game will be that game will be interesting. Obviously, Pokemon, we didn't want to delve into it this week. We considered it, um, but because 
know the game's not out yet. Um, obviously, the discourse around Sword and Shield has been a lot, uh, both po positive and negative. And so I anticipate SCGC touching on that next week and maybe even doing a whole episode on it. But it's uh, we're like kind of at the tail end of, of new fall video games, and I'm tired uh, in my soul. And at least Doom got delayed, right? We're all happy about that one. Yeah. I, well, yeah, but it got delayed into the hell of next yeah. year. But yeah. I, I, I could go for some Doom. I could always go for some Doom. <laughs> oh, okay. Yo, nobody's asking us questions. I think we're going to yeah, bet. Somebody yeah. point out that the Doom delay hurt Stadia, which... <laughs> yeah. That if the one, delay that... of a multi-platform game hurts your console, you had other problems. That's well, all I'm going to say. By the way, I just think it's funny that Doom would have been the 13th game on <laughs> Stadia's launch lineup. Nope. Oh, let me see this. No, no. Oh, no. How do I've we still block? got him muted? How do we just kick John. <laughs> I still got him muted. Jesus Christ! Unmute me. I if just did. Him, I don't know why, but I just did. Unmute me. Okay. <laughs> I, I have a question for Derek. Derek, okay. what is your starter? A Sobble. Sobble squad, all the way. And I'm gonna name my my Sobble either Sterling or Kate, depending on if it's a boy or a girl, because e then either way, it's a spy named Archer. Okay. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I wanted to know. Yeah. That was oddly civil for a bust in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, what's the hardest skateboard trick you can you can do? Um, probably the 360 flip. So for people that don't know, uh, or three flip, it's basically a full 360 rotation uh, of the board, and then like a full spin. I don't know, like a kick flip, but the whole board spins 360 under your feet. Um, is that a, is that a mix? Wait, wait, wait. I can't jump. Pop, so pop shove is pop shove it only 180 degrees? Pretty yeah, sure so pop shove move. it. The board doesn't flip. Uh, like the top, the grip tape stays up. It's just rotating 180. So a 360 flip, the whole board spins 360 under your feet, and then it also does a full rotation. Um, wow. So yeah, that one took me a while, and then I think we when we used to ollie, we would like stack decks on one another, and I think my max was like. I'll lead five decks, which is pretty high. That's like probably four feet. Wow. So, yeah. And then I busted up my ankle and now I'm old as shit. So, <laughs> now you can only do it after you've been drinking Monster Energy. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, guys. I think that we're going to wrap it 10 minutes early tonight. Uh, I do want to give a special thanks to everybody in the audience, but also, friend of the show, Sam. Thank you so much for coming on, writing the show, tolerating our resident boomer. We uh, so appreciate you being with us, buddy. I mean, I have to tolerate the boomer every day in Discord anyway. It's, so yeah. it is. so it, it, you get used to it after a while. You, you get used to it. I love you, John. I really do. But thank you, guys. And, he's a good and Sam, story. Tell, people, tell people where they can find your work. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, so you can follow me uh, at on Twitter at Samuel Talbert. I'm lucky. I actually just got my name, which is really cool. And then you can find everything I write about Xbox or PC or Windows in general on Windows Central. We have a great team there led by Jez Corden. And then you can actually find my Nintendo and PlayStation-oriented content on iMore and Android Central, respectively, which is pretty cool. We're really growing a good gaming audience there to complement what we do for uh, PC and Xbox. So please check us out. Yeah, a couple pieces yeah. of uh, small housekeeping before we jump off. Uh, if you are not in the Discord, you should be in the Discord. Uh, that link is our Discord, uh, and you should join it because it's been a fucking jam, uh, and you're missing out on several incomprehensible inside jokes per day at this rate. Um, we're, we're getting close to, like, 200 members, which is really good for the, like, what week it's been up, um, mm -hmm. and it stays pretty active. Um, tomorrow morning... Uh, should be right around 9 a.m. Uh, we're going to be doing the SCGC morning show, so that'll be me, that'll be John, um, and then we have, as a guest, uh, Nintendon, because Reb is going to be uh, not with us because she's busy. Um, and then uh, whenever I finally get my copy of Pokemon in tomorrow, because uh, I'm a stupid person and accidentally pick shipping instead of pickup, uh, when I get that in, I'll be streaming pretty much nonstop on and off on this channel on the SCGC channel is like coverage um, and the other discord, like other mods and members will be popping into the chat and it'll be a good time. Um, 
I think it's I think it's what we got. I guess I guess all I guess my final housekeeping things uh is yes, as everybody said, there's Discord. Uh if you if you like Sam and you should, he will be back on SCGC in a couple weeks. Uh he's always with us for the game awards at the end of the year. So of they course can't eat me out. Of course he will be here. Um until then, uh I think everybody have a, a lovely be relaxing weekend if you can. Uh, uh, be good to yourself and to others. Uh, remember, popcorn is a dessert. Good night.